Hello. Hi, everybody. Um, I hope this works. I'm going to give it just like a minute or two here so that we can make sure that audio is all working for everyone. Uh, oh, it looks like it's a little loud, so I'll turn it down just a bit. Um, uh, so if there are any problems with audio or with video, I know that um, on the first one, uh, we ran into some some problems with uh, like uh, some glitchiness on Picardo's end. So um, if you wind up seeing any of that, just let me know uh, either on Discord or on the chat here. Um, and I will address it if it's on my side. If not, um, the reason I needed to restart the stream was because um, the uh, uh, I'm using trying out uh, Picardo's record feature um, and had been playing like 10 minutes of music on the stream and I didn't want like that in the recording. Um, so I figured uh, this will hopefully help and uh, we will be able to actually um, record uh, the stream. Oh, it doesn't want to play. Are others having any issues with the stream not playing? <laughs> it is a kind of a terrifying emoji. Um, Okay, um, I'll give it a, I'll give it another minute here while we kind of sort out uh, some Picardo stuff. Um, so for those who tuned in a little bit early, that was um, some of my piano music um, that I wrote back in university and haven't really touched since, but it was fun. So I uh, figured that's maybe kind of worth bringing up because it does show up in the book. Um, there's some... Uh, I, I don't think you'll need... Uh, I'm using Firefox and it works for me, so... Um, I don't really know quite what's happening there. Is it... Um, is it on the uh, browser on, like, a plug-in side, or is it on, like, a network side? Does it just spin? Um, technology. Computers were kind of a mistake but also very nice. So, um, um, hopefully that can get sorted out. Um, so meanwhile, uh, since I think those who are sort of working on that are people who already know me, I'll talk a little bit, a little bit about myself. My name is Madison Scott Clary. Um, I am, uh, 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 an author and editor and, um, uh, and a, a software developer, and just kind of a, a, a nerd. Um, and uh, this uh, whole get-together is sort of a um, virtual book launch party, because um, I would normally have done something like this at, you know, a, a, a gathering that others were able to attend, and, you know, um, were able to sort of interact and, and so on. Uh, but Obviously, there are uh, some some ongoing uh, issues preventing that. Um, say, you know, something to do with uh, global pandemics and civil unrest on a national scale, and um, also unemployment. Uh, so that is kind of uh, an issue. But I still want to be able to sort of get this book out there and talk with people and. So on. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to sort of give an introduction. I'm going to do a little bit of a reading. I'm going to talk about the making of, uh, give some discounts uh, for those who haven't already ordered, and um, then uh, just sort of take questions. And I'll take questions in the Picardo chat, in Discord text chat, and I'll open up the general voice channel on the Discord server. Uh, for those who aren't in it, uh, if you go to this... Uh, if you go to that address, it'll have a link to the Discord server in there that you can join. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so um, for any question that's asked over text, I'll repeat it so that, you know, others who are not reading the text will be able to sort of figure out what um, I am talking about. Um, let me check here. 
and um, give it like another second here and we'll see if this works. And if so, then I'll go ahead and get started. Oh, boo. Um, so, uh, I don't, I, uh, with apologies to uh, Fornius and Des, hopefully they are able to attend in a moment here, um, but I would like to get started so that we're not all kind of just, uh, uh, just kind of sitting here. Um, so, uh, Ally, this is the book that is, that is out as of today. Um, it is a big, big honking book. Uh, it is eight and a half by eight and a half. It is almost 400 pages. Um, sorry, it's 465 pages, so it's a little bit long. Um, and uh, uh, it focuses a lot on unique elements of design. Um, there's uh, some music scores in there. Um, there's some uses of color um, and, uh, you know, various, various different aspects. But the big sort of cohesive, uh, cohesive part of um, uh, the cohesive aspect that pulls it all together is that it's, it's structured as a conversation between myself and um, what is termed the ally. Um, and the ally is, is not necessarily 100% myself and not necessarily a completely separate person, but, you know, sort of a, 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 in a therapist sort of way, like urging me and sort of giving those gentle little like nudges of like, hey, no, you really need to dig at that a little bit more. Um, things that, you know, maybe like a therapist would, yeah, you know, or a parallel me, uh, as Tupac puts it, like, um, that would sort of nudge me to dig into this and find it and sort of like work through the issue. Um, the book originated um, back in last summer when uh, I had just finished pulling together all of the stories for Restless Town, which was a book of short stories uh, that I released in November-ish. Um, and I... Uh, um, had finished that and was looking to do a different sort of project that focused on um, something other than fiction. Like I wanted to do something nonfiction. And at the time I was really working with, uh, I was really going through a nostalgia phase. Okay. You know, occasionally we'll uh, get into this phase of just like, I need to go pick up, you know, I need to go dig back into my live journal or I need to go, you know, like God rest its weary soul. Or I need to go, you know, try and find archived stuff of all of my um, sites from high school, which is so cringy, but, you know, sometimes you just got to go all the way back. And um, uh, so the uh, I started writing about sort of, you know, things that had happened in the past and things that are happening in the present, as of last summer, as a, um, as a sort of... Uh, you know, like, at some point, as a trans woman, you deal with um, sort of a, you know, like, it's kind of insulting to hear a parent say this or, like, a friend say this, but it, you kind of deal with uh, the death of your former self and the birth of who you are now. Um, and sometimes sometimes that's a joyous thing. Sometimes you are, you are sort of sloughing off uh, these uh, layers that have accrued on you through socialization and so on. Um, that, you know, built up something that was very uncomfortable. Um, and sometimes it's kind of painful because, you know, you're, you're struggling with this new version of you that people don't quite know how to interact with yet. Um, so the big, the sort of big co core concept through, uh, or the big plot, if there is such a thing through the book is sort of this death of Matthew and birth of Madison and sort of like what happened in between, because there was sort of a you know, an intercalary period there of, like, you know, stopped counting time almost um, f after Matthew died and, and before Madison began. Um, so uh, um, the uh, big uh, thing, and I'll, I'll do a reading in just a sec here, um, the, big, the big way that played out is that um, uh, there is sort of this... Uh, Throughout the book is this conversation um, taking place with um, essentially two different two different fonts, two different styles. And, you know, I've got sort of like the standard book style where you know I'm just writing and writing and writing, and then like interjected as sort of block quotes in a different font and a different color is um, the conversation with the ally. Um, and uh, uh, so. As I do this reading, I'm going to try to sort of give the ally a voice, even though, like, inside my head, it's not, it's not a, a, a thing that has language. It's not a thing that has 
words. It's it's a thing onto which I cast words. So it's going to be, I'll try and make it uh, obvious when the ally is talking versus when I'm talking. But, um, uh, you know, it, as a visual medium, it's a little difficult to show off when just reading from a book. But um, So this section is from sort of about two-thirds of the way through or three-quarters of the way through when I'm, uh, you know, sort of talking about the process of writing and also sort of the origins of uh, the origins of the book, um, uh, the project, I guess. Uh, so, sort of to backtrack just a sec, Ally began as a um, an online project, um, a, a very simple website where you would sort of like click through different pages and each would be styled slightly different and you'd be able to sort of interact with them in different ways, um, sort of like a, a text adventure type thing. Um, and uh, so like that was when I talk about talking about the project, that's it was actually ally.id um, uh, that uh, um, what, that that is mentioned here. But you know, obviously now it's in a, a book form. So I am not sure what is happening out there. I hope that James is okay. Um, okay, so today my therapist asked what the plot was to this new writing project. Me, the ally says. Pretty sure you're just the antagonist. Come now, don't say that about yourself. Right. I stammered something about how it was more about overriding themes. I wrote about alcoholism. I wrote about my dad. I wrote about all those little side quests. It's a way. It's about the way creativity affects and is affected by all of those different things in my life, I said. Were you not creative when you drank? Certainly not as much as I am now that I've stopped. This sounds exhausting, she said. Well, it is, in a way. It's very easy to write. It flows onto the screen far easier than any fiction or article I've written before, but it leaves me totally beat afterwards. The ally says, You're really good at wearing yourself out. You spin in circles around the smallest things. You wind up exhausting yourself on the daily. I suppose I do, at that. Well, you sound unsure of how you answered her. This project is sort of ill-defined. You are ill-defined. I'm not going to deny that. I'd say a lot of this project is accidental, unintentional. I stumble about at the end of your lead and, as you say, spin circles around the smallest of things. It's hard to come at this with some sort of idea of plot. I can't even work chronologically because if we work from the beginning of Matthew's life, back in 2000, we keep having to double back and look at proto-Matthew's life before that, and to understand that, we keep having to go look at all these other people. There are too many of you says my ally. Point well taken. All the same, I'm not sure I answered her incorrectly. The core conceit of this project is one of creativity. Not anything so guided and structured as writing or composing or programming, but that raw, primal thing from which the others spring, or seep, depending on the day. It's about the ways in which this idea, this entity, impinges itself upon various things in my life. It's about the ways I shape and am shaped by it. It's about turning it back on itself as much as I can and applying creativity to the idea of creativity itself. Using words? Well, mostly words so far, yes, though I'm slowly incorporating bits of other things too. There's another metaphor to be made here, or remade, actually. You keep winding up stuck on these very abstract concepts. You keep talking about your complex feelings on your dad or the way Margaret's death affected you, or on mysticism, and then you circle again, circle them again, and again, now narrowing, now widening, in an attempt to triangulate some imagined center. Writing, composing, programming, those are all inexact tools to apply toward inexact goals, though. Is that so wrong? Is it wrong to try and focus through words? Is it wrong to try and figure out more of how you, th how you think through something creative? No, but it is important to be cognizant of that fact. All of writing, all of creativity is selfish. To take some idea or some concept and set it down to paper and say, I made this, is selfish, of course, but then to take that thing and to show it to others with the expectation that they might get something out of it as well is taking that several steps further. To sit down in front of the keyboard and say, I am going to write a story about a person who runs away from home to escape her fundamentally unhappy life, and to then take that story, post it on the internet, submit it to anthologies, publish it in a collection, and attempt to get others to read it, is selfish. It's an act of improvement for the writer, sometimes on a very real basis, if there's money to be made in the process. 
to sit down in front of the keyboard, however, and say, I am going to write a story about me when I ran away to escape my fundamentally unhappy life. Well, now we're up to three levels of selfishness. I try and nail down an idea to paper or screen and say, somehow, that it is right and good. I make that idea about myself, and then I try to show the idea to others. Is there no good to be had from memoirs, then, from any autobiographical content? There's certainly good to be had for the writer, for the creator. On my end, I'm making something that feels that I feel both proud about and I'm learning from. I'm learning more about this art. I'm learning more about all of these problems I'm tackling. I didn't know, for instance, just how conflicted I was about my dad until I started writing that section on the site. I thought, oh, I'll write about my past and make the final point that I had to accept there's a certain amount of my dad that I'm comfortable having in my life, a certain level of relationship that's, expect that's acceptable. I was not expecting to learn through writing just how conflicted I am about it still. And for others, is there not enjoyment to be, gain to be gained from that which you create? Disappearance was good, I thought. I got a lot of good words sent my way from some folks that mean a lot to me for it. The story left an impact on them. They came away from it with some enjoyment, or at least some level of emotional resonance. This project, though? I don't know. There are bits of it that I've tried to make enjoyable. I had fun with the koans and the birds. I put a lot of emotional investment into the bits about Margaret and my dad. I tried to do some fun mixed-media stuff with the Personia animations and the mysticism stuff. I can see those being enjoyable. And the rest? I don't know, honestly. What about applicability? Hmm. You came into this page thinking, ah yes, time to dunk on myself again, didn't you? I guess I did. Self-deprecation runs deep in queer lives. Self-doubt plagues artists. Self-deception runs in the family. Selfishness is defensible when it leads to entertainment, applicability, or self-improvement. To an extent. At some point, it's just narcissism. At some point, get so treat yourself that one loses sight of the collective improvement. Of course. Are you really in danger of such? Constantly, feels like. So that's uh, a little bit of the uh, section on Ally. There's, there's a couple of sections that I you know, have marked as sort of meta. You know, they're about the project itself and... and um, so there's a there's a couple of like addressing the concept of writing a book that you know is sort of an interesting sensation from from being an author. Um, so as mentioned, I spent a lot of energy on sort of the idea of typesetting and design and using using the fact that you know uh, I can do so much when it comes to designing a book. Uh, as an experience that um, I can make that part of the story, which is sort of a core, excuse me, a core concept in ergodic literature where you are, um, the act of reading the story is part of the story itself. You know, in some books you lose yourself in them, right? You just, you know, sit down and like you don't even notice yourself flipping the, the pages um, and then you get to the end and it's like, wow, that was a great story. And in some books, you know, the act of flipping the pages, the act of your eye scanning across the story is part of the story itself. Like a good example would be House of Leaves or um, uh, Nabokov's Pale Fire or um, Doug Dorst and J. Abrams' uh, uh, S, um, which is like really, really, um, you know, like engrossing, um, even if it's not um, something you could lose yourself in. Let me turn off notifications. Um, so, uh, I spent a lot of energy on typesetting, so I'm going to go take, I'm going to switch to screen sharing and then take a look at some of the typesetting and we can talk about that. So, um, as you can see here, this is sort of what the conversation looks like between me and the alley where you've got, you know, some, some, some talking, you know, like we, you know, have me talking about my my sense of things and also sort of the allied responding to me. Um, you can also see there's a giant margin here on the side. Um, and that's because with the site, which I'll go ahead and pull up just to, um, to hammer the point home, I guess. Um, with the site, you're dealing with a story that takes place sort of as scattered ideas that, you know, sort of 
mimic the way that memory happens. Um, when you're dealing with um, thinking back over the past, you're not thinking in a straight line, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. Instead, you're thinking like, oh, you know, I'm going to like go back over, you know, thinking about how um, my relationships work and how I got into this idea of, or into my relationship, relationship structure, my polyamorous relationship structure, and then thinking about like, well, wait, how did I get into that? Like, why is that something that's important to me? And then, you know, that's like, oh, well, maybe it has something to do with sort of the relationship structures that I grew up with. So we wind up, we wind up, uh, you know, starting to talk about relationships. And, and then it's like, oh, well, there's this other sort of thing that's going on. So you can see that, like, by using the space on the page, I'm able to sort of express um, not only what is not only what is happening in one strand of my memory, but also the sort of tangent that I went off on. Um, and I think that, you know, by using design, it's really, it really helps to sort of, um, you know, evoke an experience as well as just um, sort of the story of the past. Um, I did run into a few problems here and there. Um, uh, let me see if I can find a good instance here. Um, uh, oh, my book is too long. Oh gosh. Yeah, so here we go. Like, you can see how, like, the text on the side here slowly gets smaller and smaller and darker and darker until it almost fades out. Um, you know, like, trying to evoke um, something that on the website might have used animation. So if I go and look how that worked on the website, on the, the sort of digital side of the project, maybe, um, you can see that it's actually an animated thing where like the text is sort of coming at you and there's sort of this ambient background playing. Um, this is actually a recording under a bridge of cars going over the expansion joints. Um, and the, you know, the, the ways in which, let me check levels here, the ways in which the text moves sort of help evoke it, evoke a different, um, a different, and you know, something you can get involved in. Um, and uh, so how to translate that onto a page is sort of like, well, you know, maybe I can, you know, do something cool like this, where, you know, if it's, if you're sort of like engaging a hypnotic sensation, then maybe like sort of this idea of sort of like letting go and calming down and so on just sort of is expressed in the text. So I had to teach myself way more LaTeX than I ever thought I would. And I thought I was like pretty good at LaTeX, but um, wow. So coming up with all of this um, led to um, sort of a bunch of different problem solving um, techniques around layout and around design that I sort of had to, you know, do a whole heck of a lot of Googling on and sort of like coming up with different ways of expressing. Um, uh, so since I ran into so many of these problems, I started pulling together a list of things that I learned when uh, putting together this book. Um, so uh, if you go to that launch page, that ally.id slash book, uh, not the launch page, the book page, ally.id slash book, you will see that there is a making of. So I came, to, I pulled together a bunch of the tips and tricks that I learned when putting together both the website and the book into a, um, uh, into a, a PDF that you can snag from Gumroad, uh, called Ally from Start to Finish. You can see it, uh, right here. Um, uh, don't, don't purchase it quite yet. Uh, uh, so it's built, uh, in the exact same way that the book is. So you can see how the columns are set up, how the colors are set up and everything. And, uh, at the same time as reading about how it was accomplished. Um, and, uh, you are also provided with the source. So if you want to learn more about LaTeX and so on, you can sort of figure that out. But it also goes into sort of the design aspects and how to pull together a project like this. I said not to buy it yet because I am going to drop a discount code in, um, uh, in chat here in both uh, Discord and in uh, Picardo chat. So you can use this discount code um, on uh, the uh, um, 
Gumroad store, which will get you $2 off the PDF of Ally, like the ebook version, and the uh, making of. And since the making of is $2, you get that for free. Um, the uh, This code will also work on... Um, for uh, on the other site, Squarespace site, for picking up the paperback um, uh, to get you five dollars off of it, and so as a thirty-five dollar book, you're suddenly gonna you know getting five dollars off of that. Um, there will be shipping involved. Uh, there's sort of an adventure there, which I'll go into. Um, we've got some helicopters outside. I live I live right next to the uh, Payne Field um, commercial or, uh, airport, so. Um, uh, so that, that discount will give you a little bit of a chance to maybe pick up something for cheaper. Um, I did mention this in, uh, on Twitter, and I'll sort of reiterate it here. If you're running into, um, oh, I never actually put it in here. Uh, um, uh, if you are, um, sort of having to make this decision of, do I get a book or do I support people that... Um, are currently going through some some really hard and very important conversations, um, to put it to put it delicately. Um, please, I encourage you to support uh, support those um, uh, dealing with all of the Black Lives Matter protests. Um, the book can wait. You know, like I can't support it support them myself because you know currently unemployed, and I'm staring down my own bills, which is also why I haven't postponed the release here. But you know, if, if you're faced with that choice, please, by all means, support them. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, like, one of the cool benefits that you get if you order the book through me as opposed to through Amazon is that not only is it $35 instead of $50 because I don't have to pay a distribution fee um, if I sell it myself, but also the book is signed. Not only is the book signed, but because this book is such a weird shape, um, there were no boxes that were appropriate for media mail, which is how you mail books in the U.S., um, that would fit it. Normally I would use a padded envelope or something like that, and there just aren't any that are big enough that would also support sort of the, the uh, floppy quality of, of a paperback book this size. So um, it just so happens that uh, by being married to a machinist, uh, we were able to make boxes for... Um, for Ally. So it's just, you know, like he's got the laser cutter in the garage. And so we were able to design a box that is perfect, that is a perfect fit for Ally. We'll keep it, you know, safe and also supported by virtue of being thick cardboard. And if you've got a laser cutter, well, you got to cut a little box critter in it. Um, this uh, box critter shows up or this wall critter shows up in uh, several places on the, on the site. And I was like, well, since these are all animated, none of them got included in the book. So at least I can include them on the box itself. Let me see if I can pull up. Um, oh, I'm not screen sharing. Uh, so if I uh, can pull up a, you can see copies of the book there. Um, usually when, when seeing those, uh, the little asides, you can see that they're, they're usually animated. You've got the little box critter and it's saying some, some growlics. Um, to uh, sort of indicate that, oh yeah, here's something that is just totally and completely on the side. So, um, uh, so uh, I've talked, um, I've read a little bit from the book. I have talked about its design. Um, I've talked about the box. Thank you, James, for helping me out so much with that. Um, and I've given out my discount code. So now it's kind of question and answer time. I am going to hop in uh, voice chat on Discord, feel free to join or not. If you do, please mute your stream um, because the stream delay will wreck you. Um, you don't have to. I will also answer your questions uh, in text on either the Picardo chat or Discord chat. Um, and uh, so uh, questions and answers. I will uh, answer what I can. And uh, if... if uh, we kind of wind up stalling out. I've got another section from the book that I can read. Hey, yo. Hi, how's it going? Going just fine. I feel like I had questions, but then I lost them. So you I mentioned, few... yeah, you mentioned, so uh, for those who can't see this or um, aren't on the Discord, this is Kat, um, who is amazing. Ah. Um, you, you said you had a question about typesetting. 
Um, so, uh, um, I I think you ended up actually getting into it some, but just realizing the amount of typesetting as an adaptation for Ally Online because I hadn't actually seen. Um, I hadn't looked at the website because I was honestly a little bit intimidated by the looseness of the structure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes so it's I, like, oh, well, fuck, where do I start? And it's like, well, I try to leave, you know, ally.ad, like the, the root page will lead into the rest. But it's also just like that map, like looking at that map is just like, oh, God, <laughs> what did I get myself mm -hmm. into? So. So, yeah, I, I tried to I tried to incorporate as much sort of typesetting uh, into uh, uh, ally as I could. Um, so as an example, um, you know, I've got, uh, um, I don't know if you still have your, your, um, uh, Picardo open, but muted cat. Um, I have it opened, but paused. Let me, paused. um, okay. um oh, run it and then mute. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay. So yeah. So once, once the stream catches up, obviously there will be some, some stream, stream lag. Um, there's like, you know, you can see that like, by playing around with the location of the text on the words on the page, sorry, I just read the word words. Um, by playing around with the location of the text on the page, I'm able to sort of like, well, you know, how does how does it feel to go through sort of a a uh, this uh, you know ecstasy in the sense of you know standing beside oneself and sort of like feeling this like um, this like really feeling the liminal space. How does it how does it feel to engage with that? And so, you know, using, using text and sort of like overlaying it on top of itself and, you know, causing it to, you know, sort of cause the, the reader to sort of engage with the words themselves rather than necessarily with just the content um, mm -hmm. is, is something that I tried both with the website and with, um, and with uh, the, uh, the book itself. So, I am open for questions. Oh, uh, this is, sorry, Tupac, you're 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 very quiet. Um, How about that? Uh, that's a little better. I can I can I can hear you okay through the through the headphones. Okay. Okay. How about that? Oh, that's better. Yeah. I keep forgetting. I this is the first time I've actually been on Discord chat since I worked out ha the uh, trouble with uh, my USB microphone. Mm -hmm. I'm just happy it's coming through well. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Um, so yeah, like you know, uh, I'm open to answering questions. I've got you know, I can talk about the book. I can do another reading. Um, just sort of whatever mm -hmm. folks think would be they would get the most out of. I mean, I, I'm I'm thankful that you're here and that you're lending me some of your time. So I'm happy to answer questions. I have some more questions, but I don't want to monopolize the floor. Yeah. I mean, if others, if other, like I will answer questions from whoever, if you, if, if no one else does, then I'll certainly, yeah. Whatever you feel like, dude. Right now I'm just listening. Okay. I just like the fact that I can do this. <laughs> yeah. It's good. It's good to hear you. Uh, so Kat, um, so, I feel a little, there's some difficulty in asking questions having not read it, but my my first thought is there's so much of you in this book and it's obviously deeply personal. I'm curious if there's any of you that you didn't put in there. Yes. Um, you know, there there's sort of, um, there's a lot of different aspects that wound up in the book in terms of um, liminal and transitory states. Um, uh, in terms of like, you know, how did I sort of come to terms with with gender identity? How did I come to terms with, you know, sort of burnout uh, at work? How did I come mm -hmm. to terms with, um, you know, this and this and this? Um, there's a, some of the stuff that didn't wind up in the book is stuff that may have been interesting, but was not transitory. So if there were interesting aspects of my life that didn't involve moving from one state to another, those didn't necessarily wind up in there. Um, and there are, there are a couple that are like 
you know, sort of personal on um, a level that wouldn't necessarily have added to the the book's, you know, impact. Those didn't mm-hmm. wind up in there. It was just like, you know, I don't need to, if I'm talking, you know, it's Pride Month, so I, why not? Like, if I'm talking about sort of the um, the intricacies of engaging with someone sexually after transition or the intricacies of sort of engaging with um, anxiety around sex, I can talk about those in an abstract way. By, but talking about them in a concrete way is not necessarily something that is going to add to the conversation um, in a way that, you know, A, I'm comfortable with and B, is worth it, I guess. Like this, this sort of the cost-benefit cost analysis of, you know, is, will this add to the conversation? Yes. Will it add to the conversation uh, enough that it is worth me exposing myself that way, um, in a metaphorical phrase, uh, that that it's that is worth putting in there? And you know, some of them didn't make the cut in that sense. Um, there are there are of course a few aspects that are, um, you know, a, a little too personal for me to talk about yet. Maybe at some point it's something I'll be able to engage with in a in a in a public forum. But right now it's just you know, can't yet. So, absolutely. Uh, if I might ask a question, sure. So I haven't, I haven't actually, I've only read the web, the website version so sure. far, mm-hmm. not the, uh, not the book. Right. So I'm kind of curious as to what was involved in turning something that was decidedly joyfully nonlinear, and figuring out how best to arrange it in a vaguely linear way. Uh, yeah, so that, that was like the big thing that kept me from doing a book in the first place is I wanted to sort of rejoice in this, this, you know, I call it arborescent, which is technically some, a term that comes from, um, sort of like, uh, hypertextual games, um, where you've got like a central path and you can explore out along branches. We've got the trunk and you can explore out along the branches, um, and then sort of engage with them that way. And I really liked that about, about Ally, um. One of the things I kept finding myself doing in order to keep people from getting lost um, and sort of like petering out at the end of a branch or side quest, as I called it, is I would um, put a link at the bottom that said back to where we left off. Um, mm-hmm. So like, you know, obviously you get the sensation of you're moving further and further away from this main line of memory um, and down into something that is maybe more, um, uh, you know, like tangential, but you're able to sort of work your way back up the branch to the trunk. Um, and so I kind of used that to my advantage by saying like, you know, the way the book is structured, um, actually I should be able to show some of this here. I will do my best. Um, uh, I'm going to share some text on the screen. I hope that it is, um, uh, that you are able to see it. Let me know if you can see this text once it comes up on the stream. If it's too small, I can increase the, the text size. I can see it clearly. <laughs> uh, it, I can the, make it all of the slot tech? I'm sorry? All of the slot tech? Yes. Can you read okay, it? Yeah, or, I can or, see it. Or, or, yep, sure. I can see it. I can okay. read it fine. Okay, cool. So um, you can see here that I've still got all of the content in these input statements grouped as it is on the site. And so you can see I go through and start with all of the trunk stuff, all of the stuff that's in the ally, that central column on the site, and then branch out from there. And so, you know, I head into Polly, and if we, um, um, I'll just do it this way. Uh, if I head into Polly, um, where is it? All the way at the bottom. Uh, oops. Quiet. Seem to me like the way you've written this is almost like your own programming language. It's it's not mine, you know, but it, but it, it's similar. It's similar. Like I extended this this programming programming such as this language called LaTeX or LaTeX, um, which is the typesetting language, and included stuff that um, that I use, like how how I talk to the ally. There's these environments, ally environments. Um, but yeah, sort of as I was saying, like you know, I go into, I start as ally, I go into Poly, and then when you go into Poly, suddenly I'm you know also inputting content from J and and so on. So like, you know, I sort of maintain 
this this I sort of I guess strengthened the idea of a central column of text, um, or a central column of memory, and then include via the um, via the uh, oh, I lost it. Um, via the sidebars here, um, this idea of multiple things going on at once. And, you know, that led to sort of a strain, in a strange way, having to uh, figure out, um, uh, you know, a, a more linear sense to the book without necessarily losing that non-linearity. Um, so... Uh, it, it was tough. Another another thing I another thing I did was um, rely very heavily on footnotes that were just page references to other pages, um, sort of encouraging people to flip through the book. Um, that's not a good section. Uh, yeah, so it's just like, oh, okay, well, you know, now I'm going to go ahead and you know flip back to page 189 or flip forward to page 189, and you know, it, just to be catastrophically maddy about it. Um, also included um, an index, you know, so that so that I can say like, you know, if you want to just read about these aspects and just sort of reinforce the idea that it's about that it is this sort of nonlinear memory. Like even the index is meant to be treated as a portion of the text. Um, and yes, there is an index entry for catastrophically Maddie, so that we can see all of the different places. I sort of acknowledge this um, almost parodic. Um, uh, re self-referential um, medicineism, um, and yes, the index is an entry in catastrophically Maddie. So nice. um, I firmly believe that everyone should at least sometimes be a parody of themselves. Oh, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Whatever uh, parrot may be, he flops around and poops on my head. Oh, um, I don't know about a parody of yourself so much as. I'm living the up most to intense. The, go ahead. I was gonna say living up to myself as sort of an archetype. Like yeah, yeah. I, I would say more an archetype of yourself or an overly a syrup of yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a, a condensate. Re um, reduced Maddie in a, in a reduction. <laughs> distilled, <laughs> distilled essence of Madison. Gross. Um, perfected furry pulpa. There we go. Yeah, uh, the the perfected essence. Um, also, by the way, it just occurred to me that sex and tech don't rhyme, which just seems wrong. I know. <laughs> it's the worst. Yes, you're right. um, I didn't... Tax and... Yeah, yeah. Well, we're we're going to have a problem with that, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, thankfully, I'm not writing rhyming couplets using LaTeX or... That was kind of what I asked you, Matty. <laughs> um, I noticed the word in uh, your, uh, your glossary, uh, Cohen, K-O-A-N. That's a type of poem, isn't it? Am I remembering right? No. It's it's something it's um they're often sort of translated in a poetic style, but they're sort of um riddles to get you to engage riddles. Um, you know, oftentimes a riddle will have sort of a definite conclusion. It's they're like they're like Gordian knots that you're supposed to work out, like philosophical. Right. Yeah, yeah. There's sort of ways to even if there's even if there's not a fully untangled state to that knot, they're a way to get you to engage with it. And to think in and other to words, interactivity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so like you know in in the book itself, I am not screen sharing. Um, in the book itself, uh, or I'll just go on, go to it on the website. Um, there are a set of koans um, that you know are, are very much sort of like written in the style, but are you know intended to be sort of tongue in cheek of like. You know, how do I engage with a memory of myself? And the answer is what about Maddie drinking tea. Yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of like a, a lot of them end with Maddie drinking tea, and it's just like it's sort of like engaging with the idea of like I, I, I engaging with the idea that I can't. There's there's no good way to engage with memory. There's no right was, way or no I, correct way. Actually, uh, I have a question about that. Sure. And apologies if you cover this in the text, which I again have not yeah, yet read. Yeah, means, by means. How how do you engage with the fact that, you know, that this is in, in large way a memory, but at the same time recognizing with something as um as what's the word I'm looking for? Self aware as this, how do you reckon reckon with the fact that memory is also self authored? Um, there. 
there are, uh, you know, some aspects, especially, you know, I, I've mentioned a couple times this sort of complex relationship with my dad. Um, and, you know, I when I wrote the first part, when I start, like, you know, even in that section I, that I read, um, when I was starting to engage with, um, when I was starting to engage with talking about my dad, I, I was sort of acknowledging that, you know, there there's... there's all these things I remember and I remember being really frustrated and really angry with him all of the time. And, you know, like sort of feeling like, um, less a son than a buddy. And like, I was, I was sort of struggling with that as a, um, as a way of, you know, having been brought up. But in the process of writing that, I sort of came to this, this idea that like I was dealing with, with the emotionally impactful memories without necessarily dealing with the day-to-day -day memories and then sort of going back over and being like well how much of that did I remember in that way because it was emotionally impactful to me but was not necessarily emotionally impactful to him you know how much would if we were to sit down and talk how much would our memories of what happened differ and so like it's it's strange even in the process of working on ally you know like i you know was having all these sort of frustrated and complicated feelings about my dad and then i just you know i just caved and i emailed him and so there's a <laughs> section in the back of the in the back of the book where you know i start talking about a lot of the a lot of the text of the book is focused on sort of this death of matthew and birth of madison i start talking about the fact that we're kind of continually going through uh, deaths and rebirths. Absolutely. Um, and, and so like, I'm kind of experiencing this death of Madison qua, you know, software developer or, or, you know, these, like this aspect, these aspects of myself are like continually sloughing off and, you know, sprouting new things. And like, you know, I've had a couple of people confront me against about my, uh, use of the term dead name for myself and it's like it's not i'm not upset at it i'm not upset at matthew being gone you know leaves there's a leaves dry out and fall off the tree the there's a death of the author joke to be made here but i can't find it <laughs> but yeah so i wound up i wound up emailing my dad and essentially saying like you know i hope you're all right like here's what is actually happening in my life i'm gonna send you something of substance and i got this super touching email back from him about talking about how, like, you know, without being maudlin, I will always love you, and I'm proud of you in your life. And it's just, like, you know, that kind of made me confront the fact that, like, I had built a construct of my dad that I was engaging <laughs> with when it came to these memories, and that is not my dad. Like, memories are only as good as time will let you experience them. And, you know, like, that kind of blossomed into my next book, which will be out at the end of the summer, hopefully. Um, uh, sort of like the, the peril of being able to remember everything perfectly. Like, how, how do you engage with life that way? Uh, what's that, Tupac? You're real quiet. Oh, oh, sorry. Sort of like a, an apperceptive concept, context of self that you're looking back into your memories and... but. Um, certainly it's easier to look at it from your perspective not right. you specifically but the the universal you yeah that you're looking at how you saw another person or mm -hmm. what that person not just meant to you but how they sorry i, I don't know if i'm making that yeah no like i i uh, to sort of like reiterate i think you're asking how, uh i am not i am not remembering that person uh, from a universal standpoint, I am remembering them, or from an objective standpoint, I'm remembering them from a subjective, from my perception of them. I didn't have access to all of their thoughts, so I am not remembering. Usually, I mean, not usually. <laughs> I'm not, but I'm not remembering the entirety of them. Is that sort of? And the point is, there is going to be a part of that that you know, like everybody's got what they've got inside their heads, and they're the ones looking out through their eyes. Right and understanding a person is doing it on a basis that they as well as you are comfortable with right you can't just go inside someone's head and pick around if they tell you something right. you've got something to work with something yeah something to work uh, with but you're you not can't take yeah. that from someone. 
Right. But right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not trying to sound defensive. Or no. Anything. No. That's no. That's that's good. That's that's really but insightful, I'm and I like very much appreciate it. Hey, pleased to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I think. Maddie's my friend. Yeah. You're my friend. <laughs> You're a good Tupac. Yeah. <laughs> um. So uh. So yeah, um, any sort of other questions? Um, again, like there's a coupon code which will get you a copy of the PDF for eight dollars um, of, of Ally for eight dollars and a copy of the making of for free. So, um, well, uh, when I finish reading Ally in the next few days or so, can I report back to you on tapestries? Please, please, yes. Uh, that was going to be another thing. I mentioned this uh, in the earlier call. Like, I talk about selfish selfishness there, but. And it is perhaps a little selfish of me to say, please leave a review somewhere. Like if you wind up re reading Ally or reading any of my books, leave a review on Goodreads, on Amazon, on all of these different sites. It's it's really helpful, not just from sort of a sales perspective, but, you know, by saying these are the things you did well, I can say, OK, those are the things that, you know, I either don't need to focus on improving or I need to focus on honing into a finer art um, or you know, the things that you say, like, well, I got, like, so I got a, I got a review of Ally, an, an advanced review of Ally, um, that was, like, it was very nice, it was great, like, you know, they're talking about, like, how it was, like, insightful, and it was transformative, and blah, 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 and then they said, you know, it gets, it starts to meander in some of the, uh, some of the, some of the parts, and it's like, okay, so now one of the things I need to do is focus on you know, I don't necessarily need to be minimalist about it, but I do need to focus on being concise and um, uh, sort of, you know, in, uh, on topic so that I, I'd meander a little bit less um, so that it's, it's more consistently engaging throughout. Um, so, like, that's super helpful to me. Um, and, you know, like, is that selfish of me to ask? Maybe, but it's also, like, you know, I should be able to ask for the things that would help me too. So this is an ongoing question in therapy. <laughs> I should be able to offer a friend what I can do in kindness. Mm -hmm. I would rather go with, uh, if I'm going to pick one or the other, I'd go with Goodreads because Amazon has different, like there's one for us in Canada. Right. There's the one in the States. There's one right. in the UK. I think there are a couple of others. Yeah, yeah. And it's strange that... that get the most exposure. Yeah, and it's strange that Goodreads is owned by Amazon and they don't collate all of the reviews on Amazon onto Goodreads. Whatever. <laughs> I'll just go with good reason saving me trouble. Yep. Yep. So yeah. So reviews reviews really do help. But I'd also just be like, I'm interested in people's thoughts. Like you know, as Kat mentioned, it's it's very personal. Um. And so in in turn, like hearing people's thoughts on this is sort of like, you know, uh, like being witnessed. Are people seeing seeing me? And how how? Like is that something that I can interact with and engage with and so on. Am I successfully submitting? Sorry, go ahead. No, nope, you're good. I was talking for a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lorca, I was going to say, am I, am I successfully submitting to the mortifying ordeal of being seen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's a nightmare sometimes, but, you know, kind of got to. So, um, yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess, like, in terms of the, the sort of overall structure of the book, I kind of go, you know, sort of, um, my myself then into my relationships and how that delves into the past and then you know in the process of that wind up talking about mental health and then mysticism and then gender um, are there any of those things that with in relation to ally that I could talk about more or or typesetting like I've got some stuff in there around typesetting that I've touched on but I could always talk about more Um, I have more questions about almost the, uh, the philosophical context of the book. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I feel like there's very much in, in modernism and especially in memoirs, there's a fundamental assumption that identity is unary. And to what degree was breaking away from that a conscious choice? And to what degree did the idea of this is this as memoir come after the idea of this has dialogue i'm not sure if that question yeah, made no, sense no. I, th I think it's good i think it's good um uh and i will honestly say that um as mentioned like i started on this whole project by delving into nostalgia um and back in 2000 
four or five, I was reading uh, this author, Dale Pendle, um, who wrote this trilogy of books called the Pharmaco Trilogy. And it's, it's a very delicate usage in his case, but occasionally, like, indented and italicized, he will sort of... It's, I don't, I wouldn't even call, like, in the context of those books, I wouldn't even call it breaking the fourth wall, so much as taking a step back and acknowledging that we are reading, like, acknowledging the author. Not even that we are mm-hmm. reading a thing, but it's just sort of like acknowledging that the author is a person. Um, and so when I was talking about, when I was, when I was starting this project, um, uh, the, the, the initial context was not, I am going to write a memoir. It's, I'm going to work through some of my problems. It will involve the past through the structure of a conversation. Um, Mm -hmm. So it was definitely sort of this concept of the ally that came before the concept of the memoir. And that that did in turn lead to a less sort of, not not only linear, but less singular and unified idea of how memory works as sort of a happy accident. And as soon as I started catching myself talking in that way, I latched onto it and I ran with it. So that that was sort of like the the origin there. And like, you know, it, it's I think it appeared most strongly when talking about um, the things I'm most conflicted about. And that's like that's a um, a term that I use without. Um, uh, of, 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 of value judgment. Um, so there, there are obviously things that I'm, you know, I'm conflicted about this thing about my relationship with my dad. And so like this, 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 this conversation I'm having, and at points it did feel like I was talking to somebody else, this conversation mm-hmm. I'm having, like the ally just kept nudging and nudging and nudging. Like you, you were not getting to the bottom of this. You were, you're, you came into the super upset and you're getting less upset. Why? Like, let's talk about that. Um, and, you know, so, like, the, that is one place where, you know, it became really clear that it was, like, there's not a single point of view. There's there's me remembering who I was in the past, and there's me now engaging in the act of remembering that. Mm-hmm. And then there's the me, the all of the different me's in the middle that were processing and acting upon those memories. You know, I, I talked about the relationship section and how that related to the relationship structures I grew up with. I consciously, very consciously, at you know, at the time when I started dating, said, I want to date, but I want to do everything I can not to not to get in not to feel romance, not to feel love in the way that my father did. Because, you know, there was this sort of like, you know, he as he moved from relationship relationship to relationship and to be clear should should he be watching this i love him dearly but you know sort of moving from relationship to relationship was a very haphazard and subconscious process and i wanted to be very conscious about it um uh so there's there was those sort of like they did have you know a value attached to them but you know conflict is also like engaging with mysticism like i don't know how to put into words the way i feel when interacting with uh ecstasy the the sort of spiritual definition of ecstasy of like standing beside yourself Mm -hmm. and or standing outside yourself and the fact that i didn't that i don't know how to put that into words and that i keep trying led to this sort of back and forth of like how do I do this? How do I do this? And like, you know, the ally essentially saying like, just say it, just come out and say it. And like me saying, I don't know how. And then just like, you know, it led to me sort of keep repeating different things. Like if I'm able to, you know, do something like, uh, not like not find the section. Um, if I'm able to do something like, you know, well, maybe if I draw, like what if I draw something and put it in there? Or what if I like put this sort of like, you know, induction at the very beginning? Or what if I, what if I write in haiku? Or what if I, you know, what if I uh, start pulling together 
poetry, like uh, poetry about transformation. Like, are those things, those are all things that have me feeling like I could get closer if I just did it better. And the ally being like, you understand, right, that you are, that there is no close enough. Like, <laughs> it is going to be a Zeno's paradox, no matter what you do. You may get better at writing about liminality, but you're never going to be able to encompass liminality in words. So, and I mean, then I'm just like, like I can't stop the them. point. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, I can't stop art, though. Like, how, do I, how, do I, how do I continue to engage with that? conceptualize zero or conceptualize perfect yeah like the idea of perfect well, they're meant to be driven towards but yeah they don't really exist do they yeah yeah and it's just like you know you, you, yeah you talk about like you know what does wet mean like are like what does wet mean to you you can answer yeah that. yeah and like even even then it's just like you know like is the water is it only when the water is touching my skin and I can feel it or through my nerve endings that I'm wet? Water, or yeah, because it doesn't have to be water. Yeah, exactly. So there's like there's all these different sort of like trying to pull together it's some idea like and wolf person falling on your head. Right, right, and like never being able to to actually get there. But then you know like in the in the on the cover of um, I kind of lampshade it. I will, I am not shy to admit, I will lamp, I lampshade it on the cover of the making of on Ally from Start to Finish. It's just like, I can't stop. Like, I can't not write. So if I'm stuck with graphomania, you know, to sort of adopt a, a, an imperfect term, then like, and I keep doing this, like, at what level am I okay with, okay with that Zeno's paradox? At what level am I okay with ever finer approximations? So, you know, it's not, it's, it's, that's definitely a, like, a topic that, you know, sort of drives through the book at points, you know, I, I talk about sort of that core trunk of the story, and a lot of those passages are sort of self-referential, they reference the fact that I'm in a conversation with an aspect of myself, they all talk about, like, you know, what am I okay with? Like, what, at what point am I all right with continuing along this path? So. When I tried to think about the context of emotions, context of how my head works, a lot of the time, and I rejected it at first when people, uh, sort of like to say, well, my psychiatrist or even my dad would talk about it, that I need to break it down into pieces. I need to take it academically. And I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel comfortable with it. But I'm not saying for you. I'm saying for sure. me. But how it came out, breaking it down into pieces, not so small that I think I'm making a mess, but small enough that my head can wrap itself around it as it progresses over time. Right. I can handle more things and more complex things as time passes. And right. what's in my head evolves as my ability to reach out improves itself right because like anything else the human mind the human memory the human ability to do what we do is not static it never is if we want it to be static it can be but in its natural state it never is right because we keep on learning right yeah exactly and we like you know if if we're dealing with this topic of of sort of this ongoing cycle even in one life of of sort of deaths and rebirths it's you know like the person that Madison was prior to transition and prior to, you know, seeking mental mental health assistance, it's like it's that person is gone. That person is no longer exists. And, you know, that process of, as you say, being able to sort of break down a problem into pieces at which point I can actually conceptualize them is, you know, was part of it. That was part of this sort of like sloughing off of the old and growth of the new. Um, like an iceberg calving away parts of itself right. down to the core. Right. And right. then rebuilding itself from that. Mm -hmm. Because that's what ice does. Yeah. That's what water does. That's just, yeah. Um, I am, I must say, getting a little sore from sitting in this terrible, terrible chair. Um, so I'd like to do another reading and then maybe one or two questions and then I'd like to head off. Um, but okay. Before Sounds that, good. before that, I would like to thank all of you for coming and chatting and um, and listening. And um, 
I was I, I in the post I offered to show you my dogs, but they are not cooperating today. <laughs> so, um, so instead I will finish with a reading and then um, another thank you and then uh, then yeah. So this uh, this um, is a um, uh, a poem that I originally wrote shortly after surgery. Um, when I was sort of struggling with the the change that that brought in terms of transformation, um, and you know, taking this very literal idea of suddenly I'm someone very different, you know, suddenly I am in a way undeniably trans in a way that I wasn't before, and sort of you know, try goodness, trying to make it more metaphorical. I don't know, <laughs> so. Uh, okay. Used to be, you and I daily would walk through the fields out back of the house and talk for hours, spilling words and emotions. These walks were our daily devotions to each other over the years. The fields dotted with ponds were our space. We tramped along those trails strung like lace along shores and through tall grass, murmuring now like winds, chattering now like brass in some changeful duet. You'd tell me about the geese in the sky would watch me stand still and not ask why the birds scared me to pieces, even as we dodged around their feces littering the trails. You'd put up with my fickle interests, running with me, or stopping to see what arrests my attention. You'd follow all of my, you would, you'd follow all of my changes and change along with me through all the ranges of our shared experience. You'd tell me of your meditation. I'd talk of my fears of stagnation. You'd always smile so kindly to me, and, I would, and I'd always feel so free in our companionship. And over time, those walks got slower, shorter, less frequent, or over far too soon, though no less meaningful as we spent our time together in cheerful conversation or kind quiet. We each seemed to be going our separate ways, with me branching out, exploring different lays of different lands, and you turning inwards, exploring lines of thought you never put in words, at least not that you told me. And then, one day, we once more went out walking, and though it took a while, you got to talking. You told me of how you sat, quiet and alone, waiting for the time you might turn to stone and be completely still at last. You told me how, as you sat, the room lengthened, curved around, turned on you, strengthened, it seemed, by your very presence, and, amid all of that gathered pleasance, bit you in half. You told me how, as part of you died in that moment, the rest of you spied, it seemed, on this very ending. You told me you thought that this rending was the end of something big. I listened in silence. What could I say? The things you were telling me walking that day were strangely shaped and didn't make sense. Or if they did, they did so around corners as pretense, perhaps. Subtext. Illusion. Metaphor. You were right, though. I could hear it in your voice. There was finality there, which spoke of a choice already made. Endings were writ on your face, your hands, and your steps. Your very pace spoke of completion. I replied to that sense, rather than your words. While you look up to the, while you look up to the geese and see only birds, I see omens and my doom spelled in V's. You speak of rooms and cleaving, but please, tell me, are you leaving? We'd long since stopped there by the pond, and your smile was, yes, sad, but still fond, as you settled down wordlessly to your knees, took a slow breath, looked out to the trees, and closed your eyes. Beginnings are such delicate times, and I very nearly missed it. No chimes to announce the hour of your leaving. As it was, there was no time for believing or not in the next moments. Your fingers crawled beneath the soil and sprouted roots, flesh starting to roil, Coarse bark spiraled up your, ar your wrists and arms, spelling subtle incantations and charms to the chaos of growth. You bowed your head, and from your crown spouted a tender shoot covered in fine down, soon followed by crenellated leaves and fine stems. The pace was fast, implacable, and leaves like gems soon arched skyward. You sprouted and grew, taking root in one smooth motion, fixed and mute. Your clothing fell away, rotting in fast time. Naked now, you sat still, committing one last crime of indecency. Your face, 
in your face, in your face with such peace as I'd never seen, even as you gave up this lease on life echoed also in my heart of hearts. I did not cry out, nor even speak, witnessing such arts as your final display showed. Soon you were consumed, transformed as a whole, your head a crown of leaves, your heart a bowl bored in rough bark and sturdy wood. Your fingers and knees and toes stood as thirsty roots. I stood a while by the tree that was you, then sat at your roots and thought of all I knew about time, transformation, death, and change. I thought about you, your life, your emotional range, your gentle apotheosis. Then I walked home, quiet and numb. No, not numb, per se, but perhaps dumb. Dumb of words, dumb of emotions, quiet. I expected turmoil, some internal riot, but I got nullity. Who, after all, if I cried out, would hear my wordless shout among the still trees and rustling leaves? Who hears? Who cares? Who perceives this non-grief? You, my friend, are still there. I walk the fields every day, passing where you changed and into something new. I marvel at you, at how you grew into something wholly different. Used to be, you and I daily would walk through the fields out back of the house and talk. Now it's just me, alone, quiet, thinking of you by the shore, forever drinking of sweet water. So that was growth. Um, to go along with that, I have a, an image that I will just leave up on the screen. Um, yeah, so this was like a recurring dream that I had about, you know, being transformed into a tree, um, which is a little weird. Ah. But, uh, I was, I was actually about to, sorry, go ahead. No, that's it. Yeah, I was about to, I was actually about to ask, because it seemed to be, that, that it seemed to be something of, of a theme in some of the things that you've written or some of the pieces of artwork that you've commissioned of just like yep. you turning into a tree, which seemed simultaneously really weird and also really numinous yeah i don't know i don't know how to put it but like it's, it's i guess it's not even the only one Let's see if i can even find it without accidentally exposing everyone to furry porn yeah there we go yep that that uh where no no the the picture that you just put, oh that's yeah that's another yeah. thing i was thinking of mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, there's a couple more. Um, I don't remember who did it. Oh, super cute Mako. Makio, yeah. Uh, well, oh, there it is, there it is. Yeah, of just like, you know, forgive the botanagore, but just like, you know, sprouting into something new. Um, so yeah, it'll show up on your screens a little bit here. But, um, so yeah, like this, uh, this uh, book is now out, as mentioned. And um, uh, again, there's those coupon codes. The Black Dog Running will get you $5 off the paperback, $2 off both of the um, uh, PDFs, uh, either the Ally PDF or the, the Ally from Start to Finish PDF, which would get you the Ally from Start to Finish for free. Um, and I believe that coupon code will also work on all of the other digital stuff that I have on Gumroad. So that'll be two dollars off of the Restless Town ebook, the um, Roman Coke ebook, I Can Grow ebook, and excuse me, and the um, audiobooks, the downloadable audiobooks there. So um, again, I'd really like to thank you all for stopping by, and I hope that uh, you know I I will I will ensure that you know a recording of this winds up posted somewhere. Um, It'll probably just be the, the built-in one that Picardo does. Um, and uh, I uh, just can't express enough how much it means to me that, that you all showed up. So um, thank you very much. And uh, to be here, Mike, yeah. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your night. Thank and you so much. I hope you have a great It's been a pleasure. Night. Yeah. Stay safe. We'll, Stay we'll safe. see you soon. Stay safe. <laughs>